Hi everyone, welcome to Nube. I'm Monique and today we're adding our third butterfly in the Kaleidoscope project. I'm also including a small segment at the start of the video about tying your antenna. You may have already seen this in previous butterfly videos, so just use the timestamps down below. You can skip through to the working section of this video. Today we have Molly. We are putting beads in our picots, so you're going to need a shuttle and six 5mm beads. Now your beads can vary in size a little bit from that dimension, but just be aware that the beads sit in between our stitches. So too much of a variation in your bead size will distort the size and shape of your ring. Let's go and make Molly. Before we start any tatting, I'm going to show you two different ways we can tie our antenna. Now that might seem a little weird since we don't have any butterflies yet, but I want to show you this first up because the way we tie the antenna will determine how much thread we need to leave for the tail. If you don't have a lot of thread, you won't want to be excessive with your antenna knots. You might finish up a shuttle with just enough for your butterfly. If that's the case, a small single wrap knot will work well. We're going to pretend that I've got a butterfly back here. I'm just going to tie a loose knot. my butterfly to the table holding the end of the thread with your finger use something like a toothpick or a tapestry needle I'm going to use my little wooden spike place that into the middle of the knot now we can position our knot wherever we want it to be by doing the same thing with the other side again our spike allows us to position the knot exactly where we want it so we're able to make our antenna knots nice and even if you have a little more thread to play with Pass the end through the eye of a needle without splitting the ply is ideal. Hold the thread in your left hand about 10, maybe 12 centimeters back from the needle. Again, we have our imaginary butterfly back here holding the needle by its tip back it up so you can pinch the eye of the needle and the thread together. Take hold of the thread. I haven't got enough there. Take hold of the thread from above the needle, not the one down here. We want the thread from the top. Wrap your needle three times and then slide those wraps down along the needle, snug them together. This thread comes into the pinch. So if I can show you without losing the lot, that's what we have. Holding the wraps between your fingers, pull your needle through. we have a three wrapped knot just gives a little bit more bulk to the knot for our antenna so the antenna you decide to use will dictate how much thread you need or rather the amount of thread you have will dictate which antenna you can use Molly by loading our beads onto our shuttle. Again I have staggered my beads to try and minimize the amount of winding and unwinding I have to do. I don't want my beads in my ring loop this time so pulling off excess thread like we did when we made Charlotte isn't going to help me for this butterfly. Setting up for ring A, leave tail for your antenna. 
we're working 10. Let my bead down. We're working a picot and one double stitch. The next bead down, we work pico, then eight adjoining pico, and three. Turn your work slightly to the left. Work ring B with three. Join back to ring A. Work five. Release a bead, work a pico and six, adjoining pico and two. Turning to the left, start ring C with two. Going back to ring B, we're working six, bead with a pico, Joining Pico and three. Turning to the left again, ring D has three, join back to ring C, we're working eight. Bead with a pico and one double stitch. And a bead with a pico and ten.
turn your thread and we're doing a square knot on the back. And that is Molly. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.